15th of December 2015, we watched in awe as Major Tim Peake made history by becoming the first British astronaut to visit the International Space Station. But just how did a short ginger lad, his words, not <laughs> ours, from West Sussex, become one of the most celebrated astronauts? Well, Major Tim joins us now to chart his incredible story from soldier, pilot and parent to astronaut. It's lovely to Good see morning. you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed Good for joining morning. us today. Good morning, Philip and Holly. It's great to be with you this morning. Um, so, so it's interesting because you know, as an astronaut, you have a great many figures and things to remember. I mean, it's quite a lot to remember doing that, and it's quite catastrophic if you forget. But, uh, but as far as your life is concerned, you needed a bit of reminding. <laughs> it was funny. I was just listening to your piece there on the clumsiest husband. I, I think I could have given him a run for his money, actually. Uh, yeah, so there have been many, many cases, you know, throughout my life where, where things have happened and, and I felt just like that. Um, so, yeah, you do occasionally need reminding and you do make mistakes. So, hold on. Hang on a second. Hold on. You can't be a You are an astronaut. astronaut who is clumsy and they let you into space. <laughs> Perhaps they didn't know that at the time. There, there was one time on the space station I was coming back with this ball of M&Ms. We were using it for a science experiment and it just clipped the top of a hatch and split open and it must have been about 200 M&Ms <laughs> went career... <laughs> That's amazing. That sounds like a game on the cube. It you need does. to do that. Yeah. Um, so listen, as a child, because I mean, you did it. I mean, you got that job, that one that everyone dreams about. And was that you as a little boy? Did you think, right, one day I'm looking up and I'm looking at the moon and I want to go up into space. I want to be an astronaut. I, I was looking at aircraft when I was growing up. I wanted to fly. I was just so passionate about aviation. And I don't really know where that came from. I remember the first time I got in a glider and I was just desperately hoping I was going to enjoy it because I, I knew I was so set on it. And I thought, gosh, am I going to be any good at this? Now, will I enjoy it? And thankfully I was. And it was really only when I became a test pilot that I started looking to the next step of being an astronaut. And I think that's what people might find interesting is that I wasn't one of these young boys or girls who looks and thinks I'm going to be an astronaut one day. My, my life was just in chunks of about two or three years. It was very incremental and this steady progress that eventually led up to being an astronaut. But you say, going back to that childhood, you say that it was the school of hard knocks and describe yourself as shy and unassuming boy from Chichester. Um, and so that class, your year, the, the, the kids that you were around, um, there must have been an immense amount of satisfaction for you to have gone through the varying stages of your career and looking back and thinking, ha, huh, no, you never knew I was going to do this. <laughs> There, there is. I mean, I never really thought of it like that, but I think you're right. I th you know, somebody was asking, do you think being short and ginger was a hindrance? And I said, actually, looking back, I think it's a help. You know, growing up is difficult for everybody. There's peer pressure. There's a need to conform, to be in the cool group. And if you're not, if you're short and ginger and you have a lot of banter and you get a thick skin very early on, I think it actually gives you the confidence to think, you know, what the heck? You just go for it. Um, and that has been my attitude throughout all of my life. Well, you met um, your wife, uh, Rebecca, in 98. You met whilst on a tour in Germany and you've been married for 20 years and you had the children. And you said, actually, you've got this career, this chunks of two to three years, like you said. But when, when the kids came along, it changed your outlook on absolutely everything. I did. It, I, I was so shocked and surprised when that small bundle of life, you know, came back with us from the hospital. And up until that, till then, you know, my, my career as a test pilot had been all about taking risks, manage risks, but taking risks. And suddenly you have to think, gosh, you know, I'm now responsible for another human being, for, for bringing them up into the world. And ever since then, it's made the decisions so much harder. Um, you know, I still do what I do. I firmly believe in that. I'm passionate, but it, it has made those decisions much, much harder. Being a parent was just such a life changing experience. It's um, it's fascinating reading um, your the work you had to do to get into space, things that you wouldn't expect, living underwater off the Florida coast mm. for ages, so and, and, and actually getting, because you had to decompress to get out, so that gives you a very good lesson on not being able to escape quickly, which you can't in space. Um, learning Russian, uh, because, uh, and, and, and sort of really quite serious Russian to be able to get you up into space. So having done all of that, um, when you get there, what is the moment for you, that one moment where you think, oh my mm. God, look at this, or look where I am? 
It's, it's the cupola. I mean, it's that window that looks down on Earth. Because when you first go into the space station, it feels like a home from home. You've spent so long training in these modules that look identical to the space station. You can almost forget that you're even in space. But when you get to the cupola and you look down on Earth, and it is just stunning and unbelievable, that's the moment, the jaw-dropping moment, where you just think, wow, you know, I've made it. Well, Tim, um, you for all of these stories here in this book, Tim Peake, Limitless, um, and it is a lovely, lovely book. It really is. Some incredible photographs in there as well. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you ever so much. It's great talking to you. And Philip, good luck with your book, The Lord is Today Too. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, that's heart. so sweet. <laughs> you are a gentleman. Thank you, Tim. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. <laughs>